Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick, this is my channel 1984. Today I have uh, what you seem to like the most, a 3DFX card. So this is a uh, Voodoo 3 3000 PCI with SG RAM. Uh, this was donated to me. Uh, the previous owner said it has never worked and uh, yeah, well, you can see the state of it kind of. So he mailed this over to me a few weeks ago. So he tells me that uh, the card has never posted and I have verified that it doesn't post, it, uh, it's not detected at all. So I don't know why this card is dead. Uh, it has been outside I think and that could be either because it was dead or it was put outside in like a, under a roof but not environmentally controlled environment because it was considered e-waste at some point. You can easily see here there's a lot of rust here, corrosion on this PCI bracket. So another thing I noticed is that the card is bent. He claimed he hadn't noticed it, but it could be shipping because there was a hole in the package. But it's severely bent over here. It should be visible. I have to keep it straight there. I can put this thing up, which is perfectly straight from tip to tip there. And you can see blue coming through from my protective mat here. So yeah, and the bend is mostly around here and outside here from here but uh, what I think has happened is the, there is the GPU I think it's flexed there it probably cracks solder bolts here might even be ripped pads uh, it could be so bad uh, that the ship is a goner but that we don't know so I guess it's also kind of crooked this way Let's see so it's it's too low over here the problem is if you google how to unbend a PCB people will tell you you can't because they're not supposed to be bent but th this one is clearly bent. <laughs> the thing is, uh, the argument is that because it's epoxy and glass fiber, and glass fiber doesn't really stretch. Y if it's bent, so it's longer on one side, like this side is obviously longer up here than here, then something much should stretch and the glass fiber shouldn't stretch. So this should be impossible. But we're all seeing bent PCBs, I think, for some reason or another. So I googled and searched like can I undo this uh, because the reason I want to undo this is like twofold. One, one is aesthetics, this just looks dumb. Uh, even, if, even if I could work with it, uh, with surface mounted and through a hole that's fine. Uh, if it's talking like pad surface mounted but you're talking PDA, like if the PCB is bent in relation to this and these balls are cracked, there's no way to get this on again. One reason I want to make sure this is as straight as possible is if those balls are correct, we need to reball this. Uh, one way to find out is to reball and put it on again. I suspect we have to do that. Then I need this flat. So the question is, how do I unflat this? And eventually I found someone that seems to write in a manner that he was sure what, what he was saying. So he seems to recommend about 130C. A lot of people were like, you need to have it hot in the solder and it's gonna break down the epoxy. And yeah, that's true, we break down the epoxy. That's actually why you get this coloring, I guess, to a higher heat load. So he seems to recommend 130C and you obviously need some kind of fixture to put to bend it back so, so you can actually get it to into the new new uh, new the, the new shape which should be flat. And you probably need to overbend it a bit, so we need to bend it up over. Just a little bit. Most materials tend to spring back a little bit. So he seems to recommend 130C. I don't remember how, for how long, but I think it's only two or four hours. I was thinking, can I clamp this down on my hot plate? I should be able to read 130C with my hot plate on this. And yeah, someone might say, the cap's gonna die. Well, I actually bought some higher value ones that cost the same. Uh, because I want to try to upgrade from 10 microfarads to 22 on my cards. So I figured I have new ones. So that's not an issue. We just. Uh, these can go, we don't care if these explode or pop off, we can even remove them before, so they, they're already gone. So I think the plan right now is just to strip the card, get the, uh, take this away, probably going to take the heat sink away to clean the card, uh, because there's, there's so much dirt on it. Just clean it, uh, and that way we get the benefit when we have it on the hot plane that any moisture, at least the most of it, will evaporate hopefully. I'm probably going to clean it in alcohol only, not water, because of the 130 C, so we don't because we don't know if there's moisture in here and so on, so we don't want to like um, have this delaminate, basically a PCB for the ship to here, the, the package, and that can delaminate. So yeah, let's get this on the hot plate to see if we can actually unbend it somehow and uh, come up with some fixture to make this and basically lay flat. 
have mounted the card on the hot plate and it's probably the weirdest mount I've done so far. But uh, that's because I don't have a jig for uh, this particular card and problem. So what I've done first off is over here, just the VJ port. So I tied uh, the card down around this, this rod here. That's just so when we push it down over this corner, that's the corner that is high, so it was sticking up and up this way, up to here. So if we were to push that down, it would pop up over here. So that just keeps it down there. Uh, then I put this, I uh, don't know the word for it, but uh, to measure your stuff, but uh, put it over here. Over, tied it down with these here and put some screwdrivers in. That's just to get some more clamp pressure. This is a heatsink with two shims and a nut and a bolt. And there actually the memories is over here where there was a big the big bend. Uh, over here is pretty, pretty much nothing. There's one uh, SMD cap over here, just over here. But I shake from underneath, it's fine. I put this as close as I could. And that's because the bend starts like somewhere around here and goes up like so. So if I were to just push this corner down. We would not go from a straight to a bend here. We go from basically from this corner to this corner. We would get a bigger radius, so a nicer but longer bend, and I don't want that. So this is to keep this part straight, pushed up here to this to this one. This measuring tool here, which is stiff and flat, and underneath here, here's a piece of a, an exacto blade. It's just to give. A little bit of an overbend because I'm expecting spring back. So basically, if I take this out and this method works, I still expect the car to bend back a little bit. So that's like a half to a millimeter, or whatever the thickness is. The blade is probably just under a millimeter. So that's there. This one here is uh, well, one of those. It's because of the same reason the bend starts around here. So we have this. Contraption here just to hold the car down, just because if I bend, if I put pressure underneath here, that I've done this, uh, the PCI slot, uh, or edge connector will pop up a bit here. So the, the bend starts here. So this holds that in place, that unbends, uh, it goes like that then. So that pushes up and takes out the bend. So hopefully it's straight and I can actually like look, look down here. I don't know if you can see, but you can look like down like so. And you can get a good idea if it's straight or not. And uh, yeah, it's fairly straight. So that's the contraption. So the idea now is to put on the heat, let it sit for many hours at 130 C or so, and then turn it off, let it cool. And hopefully when you take it off, it's straight again. That's the idea. And that's just so like we can saw the things on straight later if we need to like revolve the GPU and stuff. So I turn on the heat, I put it to about 260 centigrade, which is the hot plate itself. It's not the actual temperature up here. Some hot plates you can have an external thermistor and put on your, your piece that you're heating and have as a target. I could definitely rebuild this one to do that. But uh, I know 260 would give me around 100 centigrade plus minus two. The PCB, so we're starting out there. So the PCB, well, the, the temperature up to 260, and the PCB should be around just over 100, I think. Uh, 102 there. And 110 there. So you might notice I did change this. There was over tension, so it's actually bowing up instead. Plus, uh, when I removed it, it was pretty flat uh, around uh, here. But a little bit of a downward bend there, so I put it in there instead with some slight tension. So it's already at 100, 110 degrees, getting malleable and changing shape. So that's good and tried, so I adjust a little bit here, but yeah, that's as it is for now. Then I crank the heat up to get up to around 130 on the board, and then it's gonna sit there and cook for a few hours, and hopefully it's straight again after that. So, the card has been sitting on the hot plate for about 4 hours at around 130, probably 140C. I uh, then turned it off and went to bed, so it cooled for a long time. I'm seeing a bit of this coloring here, I don't know if that was there before, it looks like it's uh, more... It's pretty normal around the GPU because the Wood 3 card runs hot. Uh, it obviously already has some discoloring here, so that's pretty normal. So yeah, I probably have to check some footage for that to determine uh, if that's changed or not. But either way, we need to unbend it, so, and it's not uh, like a pristine card, that's why we're even trying something with it. 
So I'm gonna remove it now and see if it actually keeps the shape. And even if it does, we don't know if it's gonna keep the shape when we're actually doing some soldering to it, like hot air. Remove these. Heat definitely makes it malleable, that's for sure, on these old cards. Uh, modern PCBs, uh, I haven't seen that they, that you can bend them. Like, they, they seem to not be as malleable from my experience, my limited experience. And uh, looking at people who repair modern cards for, for a living, it seems like modern cards tends to crack when they get bent over time, get abused. These two left to do. Then the card should be free. You can remove that. So, so here's the card. This is the top side. Shouldn't be any surprises there. So here is my attempt at flattening this out here. And it's actually bent the other way, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, considering how bent it was before, that's uh, still an improvement. Uh, let's see here. That's pretty flat, not perfect. That, uh, yeah. And how is this here? Yeah, so looking down like so, I'm gonna try to show, but before because this corner was bent down but the whole card was twisted but before because i tied it down in the corners it's actually not twisted anymore so overall it's a pretty big improvement it's not perfect i actually didn't expect it to work as well as it did so with a proper jig you could probably get this more or less perfect if you really really want to uh, a bit bit better temperature control maybe i'm gonna check footage to see if how uh, if this was this discolored or not before. So yeah, checking the footage, uh, like I said, discoloring here, normal. Uh, around the GPU here was normal, but this outside here is from the hot plate. So even at 130, 140 C, you're getting this over time. Maybe one can run a lot like shorter time and maybe get the temperature down even more. It affects the aesthetics. Technically, maybe the, the epoxy quality, like how, how good the epoxy now is in terms of strength and stuff. But I also noticed when I checked uh, this, because I'm, I was talking about this corner here, but uh, it's like we went the other way now. But the whole thing was, even here around the PCI slot, wasn't particularly straight. So from that point to that point, we had like this banana effect. So. The card overall is much straighter, so yeah. Anyways, uh, straighten out the card as best as we can. So it's not stupidly bent. It's a bit discolored. Yep, I have to live with that. Now we just have to try to figure out what's wrong with this card. Uh, like I said, I think this needs uh, reballing uh, because of the abuse. So I put the card under the microscope. I knew about this damage here. It's uh, the SMD cap missing for one of the RAM chips. I think it should work without it, but it probably affects stability. So you gotta fix that. Uh, basically, if we go over here, that is inverted. So I think it should be that one. Can technically measure that one, but uh, I'm gonna take one from the donor board like it later. Uh, then I have some self-inflicted damage here. That's just when I strapped everything down and was messing around. It's not detached, but uh, these pins are definitely getting detached from the pads due to some mechanical stress I put on the card, uh, putting on the board here, just strapping it down before. So I knew about that, but I'm gonna fix that. Overall, you can see there's a lot of gunk around the pins. The card is very, very dirty. So you can clearly see it here. I'm gonna check the balls. <laughs> I don't know if they're bad or not. I'm not an expert. A lot of old like motherboard and graphics cards have this flux factory flux. 
it's kind of brownish, like a brown glass surface finish. We can actually look more to the middle, we already see some here, but you can see what I mean, it's kind of brown glass finish here. This is the middle of the GPU. As we get more and more to the right, we start to see more this dull again, like almost like uh, smashed glass. You can definitely see it there. But I actually think the balls are separated from the PCB, and that's why we're seeing this kind of glass, cracked glass solder. Because if you touch it with like uh, your uh, tweezers, like if you scrape like a big surface, like around a MOSFET or something on PCB, you get kind of the same effect. So you need to have some mechanical force uh, basically separating it, the old flux from the from the solder. So how could that have happened here? Well, if the balls left the PCB, that could have happened. But I figure if I reball first, I have that done. Because then I can really clean the card and I don't want to expose the card to water before I got the GPU on. So I don't get like moisture in it and get blisters trying to hot air it on and off. So yeah, I think the next thing is to do is just to take the GPU off, reball it, put it on again, and then fix all the other visual problems and hope it posts after that. If it doesn't, we have to look for not so obvious problems. We could also have a really broken PCB. It's obviously abuse, so we might, but even if we put on all good components, known good components, it might actually not uh, work at all. But yeah, let's get to reballing. So, it's uh, time to remove the GPU here. So I have some profiles I made back when I made a Banshee GPU swap. So this is the Banshee GPU I replaced. And it's the same size. I don't know if they're actually pin compared to these two chips. Uh, there is some card where you can take and put the different brands of GP GPU on. I just don't remember what it was and someone told me. But yeah, they're fairly similar from these generations. So that was a bench GPU. So I figured that my profile should work for that. So profile basically means the hot plate here is uh, we're trying to reach about 110, 120 on the ship, and we should be let's check 114 here if we can get it. Yeah. 114. So good enough on the ship. So you need to preheat the ship, otherwise everything gets bent and warped, and yeah, you ruin the ship too. So you need some heat from the bottom, otherwise it won't work. And then we've got three profiles, because my Athen Hot Air Station can actually program three profiles too. So i got, uh, I think the first one is 180C, and uh, that's the air coming out here from the nozzle. And this isn't ID, like a uh, professional rework station here would use infrared and so on. Uh, this is just hot air blowing on it, it's not ideal, and we, not, we don't have like a proper, like a skirt uh, nozzle to fit the ship. But anyway, I know this works. It's not perfect, but uh, it's uh, and doing it at home <laughs> DIY, so it's, it's what it is. So the first profile will be 180C coming out of the nozzle, and uh, it's going to be lower when it hits because the distance is uh, depend. The distance affects the temperature. So 180C coming out. Uh, we got some temperature hitting here then for 90 seconds, and then the next profile is uh, 230C from the nozzle hitting uh, the ship. Uh, at some lower temperature at night for 90 seconds. And the last one is 280C. Come out of here, hitting this for uh, 90 seconds. And it should uh, equal 200C down here from if, if we put a temperature sensor over here. Which I did when I made a profile because the solder, the leaded solder made, melts at 187. So. And this should get everything up to about 200C. So that, that way you can remove and add a ship. In theory. So that's what we're gonna try now. So let's take profile one and start and make sure we have a timer ready. And the time is well, that's something you have to work out, I guess. So we're at the uh, second profile now. And this is getting good. And that was just to protect some caps there. I don't want to replace them uh, right now. But they should be fine. The uh, aluminum foil is still uh, protecting it. So. so that is profile number three for 280C and 90 seconds. 
So hopefully we can uh, pull the ship off. I used that sucker thingy, I was gonna put it down on the, on the silicone panel desk and it fell off the last bit and ended face down luckily because we don't want to hit the corner. So it's a bit smeared because the tin hadn't uh, sort of uh, hadn't uh, solidified yet. It should be fine, but I, I, I wanted to have a look at it. Now I'm guessing I'm yeah I'm guessing I'm guessing because any kind of evidence is kind of smeared now. But yeah. It's perfectly straight. I checked uh, the edges here. Uh, with something straight and it's that's good that means we didn't warp it due to heat so yeah that's gonna be cleaned after the board here but because the board is already the board heat there we might as well clean it while it's warm so that's the plan so we're gonna actually we're gonna have a little bit of flux here and that's a lot of flux i just uh, fill this syringe up so And then we're actually gonna add more solder just to make sure we have some fresh solder to work with. It's much easier. So, just gonna take my biggest tip. There are special tips for this that are super wide. I don't have any on such tools, but yeah, we don't need it, but the pros use it. So, we're just gonna go over all these pads with a big blob of solder to make sure it is nice. That's interesting. Might have to do something there in the middle with some conformal coating. Some this sticking to some vias here. Maybe I was too generous. Let's see if this works as intended. I have my big magnifying glasses on my head. I don't know. Like this. Because I can't see anything anymore. It's kind of annoying. Ugh. This thing. I couldn't get my syringe to work the way I wanted either. Mm. Keeps getting looser. Need new stuff. New ice. Someone can give me a cup of new ice. That would be good. So we don't want to apply too much pressure here. We want to be quite careful. We don't destroy the pads. Get a new one that's kind of full. There are different ways you can go about this. As long as you get the good results. Who cares, I'd say. If you're doing it at home, if you're doing for like if you're a professional repairman doing it, it's obviously more important to get everything right. Uh, it's gonna be easier for you to do it. But I can't buy every solder tip and solder station in the world to just to do it the absolutely best correct way. That's what I have to do. And these chips are fairly uncomplicated for something like this. If you want to swap like GPUs, like modern stuff I have never done and I'm probably never gonna do because I don't have the equipment or the skill to do it. But yeah, everything gets more complicated the smaller it gets, I guess. So we have some vias here. Like one there and one there. I'm thinking maybe we need to add some conformal coat in there because it's kind of sucked up some uh, some of the lead. Figure should be conformal coated from factory, but mm, maybe something happened to it. We have to look at that closer under a microscope. See what we can see. Well, it's not like a flux here. There's many poles of flux. Sometimes you want to have a bit to hold on to, then you can follow it with this. You have to use both hands, one following the other. It could help if, uh, if the wick doesn't really want to like get around with just with the iron tip. And you don't want to push and push because you, you apply more friction while you're also Risking the pads. So 
So I think that's good enough. Uh, wipe this off while it's hot. I'll turn the hot plate off now. Could have done that before, it would have stayed hot for a while. But uh, yeah, if something start, like if you run into a problem and then you forget the hot plate is cooling down, all of a sudden everything's gonna get more difficult. If you set the iron for this kind of work, I, I lower my iron like 20 centigrade from normal because this is so hot in a way. This is like 110 C now, at least 114, whatever we had before. We can actually check maybe, but now this is pretty glossy. I don't know. 125. So yeah, pretty hot. So we're getting into the territory where we get discoloration on this kind of PCB after a time, some time that we learned before that long t hours of exposure to the 130 plus is discoloring it. I don't think you see that on modern PCBs plus they're usually black. I think that would hide any discoloration a lot better. Because they do get discolorated naturally by the GPU and any kind of VRMs and stuff. Some isopropanol alcohol. That's why it's sounding like a frying pan because it's cooking off. Just that uh, the heat really helps getting the flux off. But that's the PCB, somewhat prepped. So now we're gonna prep the GPU. It's time to clean up the ship and like I said I made a mess of it putting it down. Uh, well dropping it the last bit to the uh, on here. So looks a little bit messy but it's flat and nice. Uh, so we're gonna remove the the uh, old solder here. Gonna add a bit of flux. And get my biggest tip again. Let's see now. Seems to clean up pretty nicely here. Next is uh, removing all the solder. Come on, how the pad looks bigger when you're removing the very small solder balls that's always creating when you're putting solder on them. I think this one is actually getting kind of full of solder, this particular wick so another one I'm going to clean it and then take some more wick, I think. Uh, it's, this, the flux is getting kind of sticky. Probably flux from the actual wick. It's uh, 
kind of sticky stuff sometimes. Definitely some uh, residue left over here. Like you want them to be flat, so when you get new balls on, we get the same amount of solder, so the height becomes the same. So I think, don't think it's gonna get any better with my skills at least. So that's the ship done and it's cleaned. So I need to f basically assemble this frame here. So that went uh, for the ball in here. This frame is generic, so it's, uh, there's some pattern here, hard to see, but I have had it masked up for Banshee before and it seems to be the same pattern. So it's the same Banshee. Again, so yeah, Banshee and Woody Tree, same pattern. Uh, you can obviously buy one of these that fits perfectly, but uh, I don't have one. Mask uh, for the balls is prepared. So masked off what you don't need on the outside and the, the, the spacing in between. So I kind of have like an order so now because if you start rotating stuff, it's, it won't line up. It's, uh, it's the nature of it. So that lines up. I also made sure I have some adjustment screws around here for, for the height. If this is just lying straight on here, you get kind of stuck with, uh, with flux in between. So you're actually gonna do that, put some flux here and you can use your finger to smear it out. We want a small amount. Well, that's not a small amount, but whatever. Flux them up. Uh, let's see here. Get this out here. We don't want too much because we don't want the surface tension to pull the balls to each other. That's a big issue when we're balling. Beginner problem, and I'm a beginner still. I don't do this very often. Uh, there are many ways to make it easier, but it always in involves more money and buying more stuff. So. But anyway, we have some uh, flux there now. Let's see. So this uh, stencil is made for 0.76 millimeter balls, and I do have that. But I also know that half of the holes in this thing is smaller than balls. And it was a kit, so I don't know if the holes are too small. That's what I've been told by people who had the same issue. So I'm using the included 065 balls instead. That has worked fine for me for this particular task. I'm gonna add some balls here now. Obviously, if you have a lot of balls and I'm gonna buy new ones, you can just drench this thing almost and just pour them off, but I'm a bit careful how many I use, because I don't do this of, that often and I'm also not buying it, like every, you can attend, spend 25 years on a big ball of balls and you want multiple sizes and then shipping and then total and tax, it ends up costing money, so. And some people reuse these balls, some don't, because some argue that the, the flux if they get on it, they all stick together in the bottle, so some throw them away, some don't, I see in both. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna put something here on the desk just under here to make it tilt a little bit. That way the ball stays in one, on one side here. And the reason for that is that you want to remove balls that are excess balls, but you also want to make sure the balls that are missing, you want to put them in place. So right now I'm just removing the excess balls, and there was like one, I think. Then we're missing uh, like four balls, I think. And the problem with this kind of tape I put down, uh, the tape overall, is that the balls that really don't want to go over it can get stuck under it if it's moving around, if it's not fully attached. So, yeah. But it's not really profitable for me to buy stencil every time I'm gonna do like something like this. A lot of times it's the only time I do that particular ship. And I'm not saying this is the right way, but I like to use like a Q-tip just to make sure they're in place. Like so, if they are sitting a little proud. Well, they 
seems to be all there, I think. So, the trickiest bit I found with the balling is actually to get the new balls to get on the pads and like flow together and stuff like that. At this stage, you could put this in like a reflow oven. I don't have one, so we can do that. You could uh, put it up in such a way that you could reuse the stencil, the mask, and uh, have that secure the ball so it don't move away. But if I use it the way it's designed, mine, the, the stencil will expand and warp so that doesn't work. Uh, the stencil would have to be clamped down in a different way, basically. What I have found that works very well on RAM is that you start high with the hot air. Start, uh, this isn't that high, but you start somewhere like 4 inches or 10 centimeters above at a very low airflow. So I'm probably going to see here. I'm going to try 4, let's see, 5%. Don't remember what I had. And I'm going to try pretty high air temp. With the RAM ship, this worked very well, very easy because you can easily cover the whole ship moving down slowly and the balls will quite easily stick where you want them. The thing is you don't really want to put any force on the ball but you need to get the heat on the balls and the pads for them to stick. On a big ship like that so you're gonna have to move around too. Uh, like that. Uh, you see. This can go messy really fast if this doesn't work. So it's gonna start high. You probably can't see it but about 4 inches, 10 centimeters. Reason is I want the, the focus as much on the balls on the ship as possible. And I'm slowly moving down. I'm staying there a bit because the ship is so big I'm staying a bit. And there everything went to shit. I can probably sort those two balls out later my backup plan right now. So not perfect for the first try, but I'm gonna take those balls away there and put a couple of new ones on and then we're gonna go over it again. Even at 5% airflow that was probably too much and the temperature might have been too low so I got too close. So I'm gonna up the temperature a bit, that way maybe something happens a little bit sooner. I'm just gonna heat up the ship again. So I have this uh, small brush here, I could use it before when I, to coat the pads with flux. Just, just clean it and I'm just going to use it to add some flux here to the balls. Uh, and the, what's, uh, the surrounding pads, like what's uh, what's exposed here. Um, reason is I want to go over them again just to make sure they're stuck there. And uh, I don't want too much uh, flux in case they... Now they seem to be stuck, but if they weren't and I had some, I had secure. But I don't want them too much flux because we don't want them to lie, uh, to, uh, for any reason, have some ter surface tension that can make them suck, get stuck together and we get a blob. So because then we have to start all over again. So this is just like a second uh, reheat here, reflow of the balls to make sure they're perfect and nice. And then we can clean the ship and make it ready to go on. Putting it for 60 instead. My plan is to just to be able to be further away, so I don't have a strong airflow coming down.
so hopefully that worked I didn't bore you with cleaning it but as I cleaned it I noticed two or three balls were not exactly on the pads uh, centered that meant they didn't get enough heat to actually like they're gonna sell themselves on the pads due to surface tension and everything gonna equalize so yeah that meant obviously I didn't overheat the ship but also meant I didn't get enough heat and the thing is I like I said my vision is has gone to crap over the last year uh, the last product I did the couple of products I did before this one it was really problematic so I had to use some aid like uh, I had to use my uh, magnifying glasses so when I looked at this with them I could see some issues it's hard for me to see when the solder melts it goes from Depends, it could be glossy, but if it's dull, you can see going from dull to glossy, and you can also see the balls move into place. And it's easy to see that on a camera when someone films in 4K uh, with a professional microscope, but if your eyes see double and everything is fuzzy and uh, you have to use some kind of aid, it's kind of difficult for me to see what is happening with the balls. I'm kind of going on <laughs> intuition, which kind of failed me this time. So, yeah, it, uh, but I'm not a pro, and my eyes are. As the doctor, no, the nurse said, you're unlucky. Because apparently I can't do anything about it either. There's like a 5% chance of doing something about it, or was was one. Anyway, uh, I'm suffering some early aging of my eyes that I should not have uh, for another 15, 20 years. But uh, anyway, we're not here about that. But uh, yeah, so this isn't that easy for me to do. Uh, but the ship is clean, the balls are in place, and I'm gonna put another microscope. So you can have a look see. We can also look at the pads of the card. So we inspect everything before we try to sort it back together again. So here we have the ship. 2D fix. And here are the numbers. So uh, this is a uh, Voodoo 3, 3000. I can expect the balls now. I clean it many times now. Really want to clean it thoroughly. I'm gonna check that the balls are there and in place. I'm left a little bit out of like alignment. We've got one looking a little bit dull there. I'm gonna check that one out. Looks a little bit dull, so I'm gonna check that one out. But it is in place, so. One doll in the middle left here, might be fine. No, it's in place there. Uh, yep. I'm just checking the height, but the height is the same, so I think needed some uh, Amtec flux on it to stay shiny. So that shouldn't be a problem. I don't think it's a problem. Otherwise, you can have some flux and uh, flow them. Yeah, but they're all there. They're all centered, all the same height. So, should be ready to be put on the PCB. So, we're gonna have a look at the PCB. So, PCI slot up here. It looks like some corrosion on the pads there and to the left. Actually, some a lot of corrosion, maybe. Pitting. I have to look into that later, make sure that these pads are actually good, all of them. We don't need to repair, so there's nothing broken along here. Anyways, so we can start looking at the pads here. Make sure they're all there. So that's the outer sur circumference. Uh, let's look at the in inner pads here. So to the naked eye, we have some like basically bias here all over. 
This is it should all be ground in the middle if I recall the data sheet on the banshee, so it's probably the same thing here. Uh, late, even later, I don't think that's the case from looking at uh, the VSA 100. I think I have a data sheet somewhere. But anyways, uh, seems to be conformal coding missing there. And uh, see over here. So it's actually much more visible to naked eye without the microscope. This looks a lot more obvious because you really don't see the, the smaller wires as easily. I think what's happened is that that saw the mask, the original one, wasn't really sitting there. And that's probably what was... Probably, I probably removed it when I was cleaned up. I don't recall how it looked on the footage then, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna check what these things go to, if anything. And turn, the, turn the multimeter on. Yeah, so that's probably, those are probably ground around it. Might be why the solder mask either wasn't there or it's gone missing. The thing is, I'm not worried about a short there or something like that, really, because as you can see, they're connected. But I was more worried that the, saw, the balls might go where they shouldn't. So we could put some solder mask on there because there's nothing that's supposed to touch the wire. So we could uh, suggest a really thin layer of conformal coat and we could uh, dilute it with uh, IPA, so the alcohol I'm using. So, I really don't want it on the pads, no. to be a bit careful. So this might not be needed, but I'm gonna assume there should be soldering mask on them. There's no harm in having it, as long as it's just on, but on the wires, and it's not like sitting proud. Anyways, I think that's fine, shouldn't be an issue. So yeah, just some precaution there. I'm gonna harden it now. Can probably this here. Probably just make sure it's not. I don't want it to stick up a lot. I want it just to, to be an insulator, nothing else. So I'm just. We're pretty much ready to put the ship on again. So we'll do that next. So I'm heating up the board. I have added uh, flux, a small amount, and drag it on my finger before it uh, before I turn the hot plate on. So, so there is flux on there, a small amount on the pads. Just drag it up my finger. The board is heating up now, so I can't touch it. It's too hot. So on this particular car, we're gonna have the notch is there. And I already checked before I even did it. There's some fumes coming up that just the flux. Mm. So I already checked this because we had that twist in it, not just the bend in the corner. Over the corner over there, we just the bend wasn't the only problem. We had a twist of the whole card that was twisted. Uh, we took that twist out. And if I hadn't, this probably would probably not be flat, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna put it on here now before it gets too hot. But the thing is, if I put this on here. I have tested it before and it, yeah, it sits flat. So, do to all this, these bends and uh, they were in the PCB, we might not have been able to put the ship on again. So, I'm just gonna let this heat up and then we can uh, reflow the ship on to the PCB. We are ready to put the ship back on again here. So it's gonna be the same procedure as taking it off. I'm gonna use our profile on, on, on the atom here and uh, the time duration of 90 seconds and hopefully everything goes well now we don't know if we had to reball this but like i stated i wanted to do it because of the very big chance that it actually needed it so i suppose we are off to races it's aligned as best as i can and then it misaligns whatever small it is 
should uh, fix itself by the ship floating in place. So, we're done. It's gonna have to cool down now. So let it cool, whatever the time that takes, and we can check the balls on the microscope. Before you inspect the balls, you should actually clean out because you can get a lot of, like, some things might look worse than it is. So this corner is a little bit high, I think, or something. The balls are a little bit stretched compared to the rest. But nothing can be done about that. It looks good to the naked eye. It's also hard now when I've cleaned everything. Uh, it's a lot of... Everything is mirror finished almost, like so clean compared to the rest of the cart. But anyways, um, when I looked at the cart at first glance, there's some balls that looks like huge, like they had like two balls that melted together. But the thing is, if you clean it, so I use some electronic cleaner uh, to spray around the ship. Uh, you can probably heat up the cart a little bit, so that it's a little bit warm to get the flux to be more dissolvable. But then you, you want to clean it with something, and I've seen people use like compressed air. You have to be careful, obviously, have a regulator and stuff, so you can blow it out. I don't have that, so I use the electronic cleaner on, on a can to basically blow out the, the Amtec flux before it solidifies completely. So I took the card off when it was around ADC, checked it. Uh, so it probably cooled a bit more, and, and then I basically cleaned it, and then it's going to cool fast. But... Uh, I used to, like I said, I came with electronic cleaner uh, from all sides, and uh, now it looks much better, both the naked eye and here. So I'm not an expert or anything, and like I said, the balls are smaller than original. So you can see here, the balls are mirrored on the PCB, so that can be a bit of an illusion. Uh, yeah, I think that's actually why these look so tall, because they're all mirrored. But anyway, the, the balls, if you do like this. Pretty flat compared to the old one because they're smaller. But a little bit stretched in the corner. I've seen that before. It could uh, probably be the PCB. It wasn't flat, but <laughs> yeah, if you hadn't taken out that twist, I'm pretty sure we could have gotten this thing on properly. And yeah, this corner is also a little bit high. But the corners did not look good on the original card either. Uh, so this is the like the opposite side of the PCI slot. And the memory is going to be in the way and so on. Like I said, there's a lot of mirroring, I think, going on on the PCB, so it kind of seems double. The thing is, I can't really do it like that, because then the memory is uh, uh, it's getting in the way. So yeah, but the naked eye, it looks very good. This is the back side, or the front of car, really, not the VDA port side, opposite. Uh, let's see. It was here, I figure, I had like balls melting together, but that's just like flux if it coats around the balls. You can look, make them look bigger until you clean the card. So don't get like, if you're doing this and go like, oh, the balls looks like crap. Clean them first and look at them again. So this isn't the best I've seen, but it's not the worst I've done. I had corners being a little bit high, but sorted. And those card, that card worked was a bench, I think. So this doesn't look bad. It's I'm not a pro, but it doesn't look bad. So we're going to try it out now, I figure, before we do any more work on it. So, this is the card. I have no heat sink or anything on it. If uh, I really need something, I have a fan, I can blow a bit on it. So you can run it for a little while. But we only post this thing. So the PCB is actually going to cool it. That's the thing you see on the back here. It's, it's a lot of uh, copper in the back. And th those uh, ground balls are on the middle. That's actually how most old gate GPUs are cooled up to the GeForce era at least. I think. Because everything basically up to GeForce 4 is essentially the same. So with the FX card and I probably like the ATI, don't know exactly like the 9 series. And uh, before then, 
everything was mostly cooled by the PCB actually. So that's why it's, you get diminishing return trying to put a big heatsink on the front. So you can actually cool the back a bit. Still. So we're going to put this in so the PCB is going to act as a heatsink for a short test here. So I want to know if we get anything. Abuse the memory. Uh, I've seen damage around the memory so we might have artifacting but usually as long as the memory isn't like the like we're talking about through broken trace or something to the memory, we usually get uh, some artifacting graphics at least. So I'm expecting that kind of. Let's see here. So the car is hooked up and there's power on. Power is off. Well, let's start it by itself instantly. Do, do, do. Oh, 43, 3000 something, I think. Do, do. You sure have image and I don't see any artifacting yet, but sometimes the letter could be wrong, but I don't see anything. But is it getting hot fast? Yeah, it is getting hot really fast. So I'm gonna turn it off. off. The reason is I when I got the car, uh, like I said, it didn't work in Italy, it didn't work. So I tested it and I had this fan blowing on it. But even without the fan, it didn't get particularly hot. Uh, so it probably got power, but I suspect it didn't get the clock signal from the crystal, which uh, from my experience with car when they don't have a crystal, they, they kind of get hot, but they're not that hot. So yeah, so the problem, probably one of the problems was actually the clock not getting to it. To it. So anyway, that's a um, success. So we're gonna fix any cosmetics and any kind of like lingering issues, corrosion and stuff. But it seems we have a car that might actually work. Now that we have what we know is uh, probably a good car, but it's obviously not fully tested. We did the post test, it was artifact free. So, what I want to do now is fix what we know has issues, like missing a cap. I'm not going to put on an old cap, we're going to remove all electrolytics. We have a missing SMD cap over here, we're going to fix that. We're going to look over this memory chip that got uh, somewhat abused by me. Uh, and yes, just overall clean it up and fix it up, uh, the remaining stuff. So I think we start by removing all the electrolytics. So I'm going to use hot air. And the, there are a couple of ones over here. These two over here. There's three of them, but the two on to the most to the right are 22 microfarads, 6 volts. The rest, this one, those two, that one, that one, that one, and the missing one are uh, 10 microfarads, 16 volts. So what I'm gonna do, on the bolt is actually 22 microfarad, 16 volts, so I can use it over the whole board. Which is actually my plan to do with my other three cars, but this is a perfect candidate to test that on. But that's the caps removed and the hot plate is set much lower also than before. The reason was not because it makes it easier to remove the cap, it's, it's then I'm going to put them on now with some new ones. And that's why. So the solder flows much more easily when I put it on with an iron. Just adding some new solder. Uh, considering how corroded some of this stuff has been, it's going to make it easier to clean. Maybe not strictly necessary, but uh, yeah. So make sure here to not get uh, get to the 
PCI connector here and get get solder on that. Can remove it, but that's unnecessary work. Also, wicking is a lot easier with some uh, heat. Even if you just heat the board up to like 70 to see, it's still much easier. So let's put on some new caps. I'm gonna just add a little bit of MTech flux if I can. And a tricky part here. That component next to it of the cap. Yeah, I think that went pretty fine, pretty well. And that is the right way. They are different. The orientation. So. And it goes like that. So this is an SMD cap missing here. I'm gonna throw something on there. So my donor cap here. So while we're here, I want to fix some of this corrosion on this uh, voltage regulator should be. Looks a little bit nasty here. Corrosion. So that we'll have to do can be at that all day, I think. Killing it off should look better, I think. I think we're done here, so we're gonna turn off the hot plate. So 
So hopefully there's nothing more to do now. I have cleaned the card a second time, so we just put on the heatsink and I had to clean that and lap it because you want to make sure it's completely flush if you're gonna use uh, what I'm gonna use, which is thermal uh, tape, uh, double-sided adhesive thermal tape. So I want to make sure it's perfectly flat. So because there were residue old glue here, I got most of it away with hot air and a knife, but uh, I lapped it to get rid of the less rest. So we're gonna use uh, basically this. So I got some left on that. And it kind of looks thick now, but when you remove both sides of this uh, double-sided double -sided terminal type, it's uh, very thin. And it also says down here, uh, not decided for quick removal, semi-permanent bonding. So yeah, it's pretty strong, strong stuff. This is kind of expensive. I actually bought a whole new roll of ter double-sided terminal adhesive tape a while ago. Instead, I got a bag of car parts at my door. So. I'm guessing someone else ended up with my uh, double-sided tape and 10 GPU heat sinks. Also make sure that this doesn't go over here because it won't sit uh, all the way down. I don't think it did originally either. I checked one of these cars. It was slightly di different direction, but that heat sink was also sitting back behind here. So I think that's actually how they intended it to be. So put that down. So now I have pretty much one shot at this. I have a picture for reference from uh, VJ Museum here so I can get it in the original spot as much, much as possible. Also the thing with wooded trees is that sure they're passively cool, that's nice, but you would need an even bigger heatsink then, and if you had a fan on this size of heatsink, that would be a good enough size of a heatsink, more than enough. It's bigger. The heatsink is bigger than most cards from the era, but they also had fans, the smaller heatsink on the competitors. This thing just doesn't, and it really needs a fan. Otherwise, it, you're cooking the GPU over time. Just pushing it down, but not too hard. Massaging it a little bit, making sure. Don't want to mess up my reballing. But yeah, this should sit almost as strong as the original. Maybe a little bit weaker, but so strong that you can technically damage things if you just try to rip it off. If you want, to, want it off, you would hold the heat sink and get a long tin blade and just cut it. But yeah, time for some testing. I'm gonna see if I can find my other card too. Uh, because I got a PCI version, another one. Uh, I think that SD RAM on the other one, so it's gonna be interesting to see if this is faster than that one. But I have to look for that one. So let's put this in the system and see if it actually is fully working now. Finally, in Windows, so artifact free, so that's nice. It asked for the Wood 3 drivers, and I already had them on the disk here. So I pointed to it and restarted and hooked up my capture card. I'm gonna run Trimark 2000 because it's kind of memory intensive. You definitely gain using DDR and SDR is like it's faster than S normal SDR, but obviously slower than DDR. So and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just check here and it says 15 megabytes of RAM. I guess that's correct for the tree. I guess I figured out when I try my other ones, but uh, yeah. So that seems fine. The Pentium 3 is running at 933 MHz. Can remove these because these they test like features, but they don't test performance. So, I'm gonna benchmark this and I'll find out what the score is, and then we can I can look for my other card in the meantime, my other PCI card with the 3000, and um, I think that's the normal SDR version, and then we can bench that too because this looks artifact free. So hopefully this passes here. So while we're recording this benchmark here, let's run on this uh, repaired Wood 3 3000 PCI. You can just have a look at it real quick here. 
Oh, there it is, in its glory. Uh, like I said, you want cooling on them. Uh, so I found my other one. This is more mint, this card. But this has uh, normal SD RAM. So SG RAM like that one, then you have pins on all sides of the ship. So in theory, this should be slower. But we're gonna benchmark this too and see if it's any if there's any difference in performance because the clock speeds are the same. So that's a score of 3049 points for the the repaired Voodoo 3 3000 PCI with SU RAM here. And I saw no artifacts, but uh, yeah. Seems to be working. I'm gonna stress that it's fully later. But I'm gonna test my own card as you know that compares. Back in Windows again with the old known good Voodoo tree that I had. So the benchmark ran and a uh, little bit slower apparently, but it's marginal, so I not like you would notice. And this just oh, two point two point nine percent. Well, well, but anyway, faster is always faster, so it's always fun to repair something a little bit more odd. I don't think they rare the SDR version of the Voodoo 3. That just seems to be less common, so to speak. The ones I've seen have an SD RAM before. We are done fixing up this uh, Voodoo 3 3000 PCI with SD RAM. The main fault was that someone decided to bend the card in some way. Probably putting something heavy on it or stepping on it. So the GPU was partially detached. We need to reball it. Then there were some small SMD stuff missing. The caps were some this one was missing. They're usually bad too on these cards at this age. So they need replacing anyway. The IO bracket was kind of corroded, but I uh, cleaned that up. Uh, due to the way we had to unbend the PCB, it got a little bit more discolored than factory. Well, factory from normal use. So this here is from normal use. Uh, this was from normal use. But uh, the extra here is from the method I used, as I showed you, to straighten out. But this was an experiment, so see if, if I ever have to do that again, I'm probably going to try lower temperature and for a shorter duration to see if I can keep the PCB from not uh, going slightly brown. So this, like I said before, this card was donated to me, and it's thanks to people donating cards that I can actually do this. So if you have anything you would like to donate and want me to fix, uh, you can hook me up on our Discord. The link is in the description. I also got the put the super tank button on this uh, on YouTube a while ago. So that's also one way if you want to help me do these YouTube videos because they're they're not free or cheap. Sadly, I wish they were. And I put everything under the creative comments. How many of these I can make, like three Epics videos and stuff like that, is highly dependent on donations. Because there's just even broken 3 Epics cards are always too expensive, I think. And I just don't, I just can't buy broken stuff and hope I can fix it just to make a video. Even if I wish I was so rich, I could do that. But yeah, anyways, that's it for this time. And I hope to have more 3 effects got to fix, and I actually I have a wooden one to fix, which lacks a working FBI, so that uh, if I can get my hands on the FBI ship, that would be good for wooden one. Then I can finish that video. But yeah, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage, braindrainland.tk, and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server, we host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.